So we're here at uh, MicroDuel, and who are you? Well, my name is Phil Pull. I'm director of semiconductors at MicroDuel. And uh, MicroDuel is a company based in Switzerland, in Zurich. And we have three business lines, one doing micro modules. Uh, we do implants, for example, that get implanted into humans. And uh, in the cochlear area, for example. Uh, we in have which a, area? In the cochlear area. Well, well in hearing, uh, I can't say more than that. Yeah. Um, we have uh, industrial applications and our, we have three product groups as I said one is modules and I lead the semiconductors in the semiconductors area we offer uh, low power mixed signal analog circuits so it's ideal for this kind of occasion where you have energy harvesting and wearables um, we come from the switch watch industry in my area so we're used to designing circuits in the nano ampere range uh, are you a swatch group no we're not with swatch group we're independent so uh, uh, the Swatch Group is uh, 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 quite a big company in Switzerland uh, and we're independent. Our origins are with Philips Semiconductors. We're a management buyer from Philips Semiconductors. But so the technology used to go and it goes in a bunch of watches? Yes, we, we, we do do watch chips and we do uh, chips for sensors as well. And the Swiss uh, industry has to adapt, uh, has to do some crazy stuff with the uh, wearable, I mean with electronics, right? Exactly, and we're already in contact with uh, people like uh, the Smart Watch Group with Pascal Koenig and other uh, companies to which we supply uh, watch chips. Of course, the Swiss uh, watch industry is based on a, on a fashion statement as well for the quartz watches that you can uh, easily adapt there for, for that particular industry. So but, what kind of functionality would you add to the watch? Uh, that's a good question. Um, the, everyone is looking for the killer app for, for watches. Everybody. And how that will be driven, nobody has the answer to. So uh, I don't have an answer to that. We basically provide, well, our, our intention is to provide a watch chip that can serve as a building block in such smart systems. And to do that, of course, you need to have connectivity. So that's, that's the area where we, we are working as well. Connectivity. And before you were mentioning something about ears, are you enabling people who couldn't hear to hear? Stuff like that? We don't do that ourselves directly. Our customers do that. And we manufacture for them modules uh, that, that uh, are then implanted into humans and indeed enable people who can't hear to hear again, yes. So, uh, so around our, here you're showing a bunch of the... What are you showing around here? Uh, well, here you can see this is for Carver. I'm allowed to say that. This is their Touch Go um, application where the circuit, we made it and it's... Uh, couples into the human uh, body field, uh, implants a signature, and that means you have a card on you, it could also be built into a smartphone for example, and the door knows to let you go through. So something is implanted? No, uh, in, in, it's this, just a card. Th this is just a card in this case. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so how do, is it some kind of RFID, how does it work? This is just uh, basically every human has a field, uh, an electrostatic field. This field is surrounding your body. And if you're a healthy person, uh, this field also extends a little bit apart from your body. And if you, you can put a signature on that field, then objects know who you are. Yeah? And you can put this signature on via a capacitive coupling. A capacitive coupling? Yes. Uh, so how much power do you need to put not this signature? Much, not, uh, not uh, Nothing. In this particular case, the signal is so small that it's below the noise level. So it's no, no impact on health or anything like this. No impact on health? No. But how long is the battery life? Uh, for this particular case, it's about a year or so. A year? You just yeah. have this in a bucket or yeah, where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, you just open the door by yeah, touching the yes, handle? Yes, yes. It works? Yes. Does it work? Yes. Who's using it? Swiss banks or...? Uh, no, it's not a... It's, a, it's actually made for semi-public uh, buildings, so hospitals, old people's homes. Is, it, is it mass production? Yes. Uh, Carver in, in Switzerland are making it. We make the chip for Carver and Carver make the product. But this, this can go to many different applications, right? This could go to... Yes. yes. Uh, everybody should have this, no? Yes. Somehow. Yeah, I, but how big is it going to be? Uh, I don't know. That would, we, we are a service provider and a product provider. That's, that means our customers are the ones who bring the stuff in the market. So that you would have to ask them for. And you have a list of customers, but you cannot say who it is, right? Unfortunately, no, because a lot of the customers, particularly in the medical area, they're very, very strict on the confidentiality. And that's one thing, being a Swiss company, uh, you can trust us to keep things confidential. Yeah? Nice. In the case of uh, Carba, we're allowed to say that. Uh, they don't mind us saying it. But for other companies, uh, it's not. Uh, so in, your, company, your customers just have numbers. They don't have names, right? I'm just yes. joking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And you, how, you, about the, right, how about here? What is that stuff? 
Well, here we see an example of chipping tape. This is just showing a delivery form. A chip and tape. Chip and tape. So the chips are actually in this tape here. This is a conventional uh, yeah. industry thing. Can you this hold is, this up? This is a, a, an example of a chip and tray, which we can deliver. So what does it mean, chip and tray? This is the tray here, and some people uh, with small quantities, they like to have the chip in the tray, so that you can pick it out and then put it into your application. So what is in that chip? Uh, actually, this chip it looks to me like a MD500, is it? Do you know what application this is? I don't know exactly what's in this chip, but it's one yeah. of our arrays, and we have got a, a certain function that has been put into this chip. All right. Yeah. And this is an example of a very small uh, packaging form. Uh, it's called wafer level uh, CSP. Okay. So chip scale package, and we have um, we have made this in 2003. We were one of the first people to make the, one of the smallest CSPs in the world. Uh, came from Mikador actually at that time. What is a CSP? Chip scale package is a, a package that's the same size as the chip itself. So there are uh, little bumps on here of uh, solder and you can handle this like a surface mount component. And it will be soldered onto the PCB board just like a surface, normal surface mount component. The advantage as you can see is they're very, very small. So you just pick one of them yeah. and put them on the yes. PCB? Yes, and then it's soldered. That's it. And then you have to put it through reflow to solder it. Yeah. How's the yield? All of them are good? No, of course not. Um, but the yield on this is probably over 95%. So how do you test which ones work and stuff? Oh, uh, it's normal industry standard. You just uh, have a prober. Uh, it's called a prober. This is a device which has needles coming down in a controlled environment which tests each chip. Where do you fab this? Uh, well, the testing is done at Mikodol itself, the wafer test. Uh, and the fabs are the standard fabs like TSMC, for example. All right. Yeah. And uh, and what is uh, the, this? What are we that, there here? is an ultraviolet uh, uh, hardening light, so LEDs, used in a dental application, uh, right. which we were asked to make special module where we make the module. So, so what do you think about the ID Tech X show? Uh, what do you like, think about this uh, uh, printer electronics and all that stuff? I like uh, ID Tech X because it brings all the emerging technologies together and uh, a lot of people with different opinions about how emerging technologies will evolve over time. So I think that's the advantage of ID Tech X and it's short and it's very intensive. So everyone goes to the lectures, after the lectures everybody comes to the trade show and then everybody goes to the lectures again and then everybody comes to the trade show. So it's not like a normal trade show where you're standing up all the time. You have a, a, an element where you learn something, you can see something and then people come to you. So that's a, actually quite a, a nice mix.